I'm Nick Hattrop. I'm Jake Holliger. We are from BCU, and we are co-leaders of the Fox. Uh, we're here today to tell you a little bit of a story. Y'all can hear me right on the mic? This way? Hey, there it is. Cool, now everybody can hear me. We're here to tell you a story, uh, or part of the story of the VCU EarthX event. All right. So environmental problems are increasing exponentially, while solutions to those problems are increasing linearly. Cool. As of September 2016, atmospheric CO2 concentrations exceeded 400 parts per million, the highest level humans have ever experienced. There we are. <laughs> there we are. Uh, so despite recent trends and recent events, uh, the Global Carbon Project is predicting that in 2018, you'll see a 2.7% increase in CO2 emissions in that year alone. Um, this is as a result of over 100 years of population growth and energy consumption over the same time period, you notice they're identical. This is only going to continue to grow as time goes on and human population increases, and we have to do something about that starting right now. Why then, when we as a species are faced with existential threats due to climate change, of which carbon-induced warming is but one symptom, is renewable energy only 11% of the total power output? What can we do to increase that percentage for growing populations as well as to reduce current carbon yields from traditional energy sources? Air pollution was a theme at our 2018 event, Renewable Energy at our 2019. Questions like these are what we seek to answer at EarthX. We wanted to share a little bit about what we learned from applying the rapid innovation model of a hackathon to the time-sensitive issues of the environmental crisis. So our 2018 event was incredibly characteristic of a typical hackathon. It was dominated by a majority of engineers and most of the solutions to the, to the problems that we presented were technical in nature. Our 2019 event was radically different. We reached out beyond the colleges of engineering in the, center, in the center of Virginia and started inviting members of the schools of business in the region as well. And we saw this in the success of our event as hackers from multiple backgrounds, out-of-state schools, and even international universities attended and succeeded at our event. The interdisciplinary space that we created was not only, uh, not only created the um, opportunity for technical projects to occur, but also created uh, an environment where business plans and business outlays were an equal part of the, uh, were equal part of the project. One of these was a project called Spore Sticker, who were working on a, submitted a business plan that ended up winning part of the event uh, to, to increase the rate of composition of carbon, or of cardboard boxes. Uh, the other project, which was composed of a group of all women and uh, interdisciplinary team, math major, computer science major, business management and entrepreneurship major combined to create a project that upcycled e-waste into uh, citizen science data tracking devices. These kinds of spaces wouldn't uh, have occurred at an event that wasn't designed to foster collaboration. And it's collaboration that's the baseline of all environmental innovation. It's critical to our event success, but more, moreover, it's critical to the success of the environmental mission to create these events that respond, or that uh, create the space for hackers of different backgrounds to participate equally in innovation. However, we realized that diversity did not just stop with our hackers, it also extended to our organizing team. Despite our event's efforts to foster inclusivity, we as organizers were still exclusively engineering majors from the previous plannings of EarthX. We lacked the perspectives with our respective disciplines to make our event the truly interdisciplinary space that we wanted, no, needed it to be. Now this was mainly due to not being able to effectively relate the event to students who are either not already familiar with hackathons or who are unaware of the interdisciplinary approach of Earth Hacks. While our previous events have been incredibly successful in terms of hacker engagement with environmental issues, our most pointed feedback was that the term hackathon still remains intimidating to non-STEM and business backgrounds. One way we've gone about getting around this issue is that when we sought to fill the seats of graduating team members, we filled them with non-engineering majors actively inviting new perspectives to not only the event, but to the event development process as well. Through these ongoing conversations we continue to have, we are quickly learning about the innovative spaces that students from non-STEM backgrounds participate in, hoping to incorporate those models into our event. For environmental hackathons, it is imperative that we not only ask that solutions be generated from different backgrounds, 
but that the space exists at the event for those solutions to be generated by students from different experiences. In the same way that every student learns differently, we recognize that every hacker innovates differently. And to cater to the backgrounds of the people attending our events, we had to create challenges and judging systems that meant that equated all projects to be equal with each other. At our last event in 2019, we created a holistic judging rubric. You can see the characteristics here that focused on the impact that a hacker could have rather than just the technical quality of the project. Even though we applied this, in its very first iteration, we saw a number of projects that developed. Many of, the many of the solutions were technical in nature. The system of products, production, and consumption are what continue to drive environmental degradation today. So this is something that we as organizers continue to, grasp, or continue to grapple with as our event goes on. Um, it's something that is the core of what, me what it means to be an environmental hackathon, is addressing the question of how to create a community that values sustainable ideas and developing those ideas, as well as fostering the kind of growth in the communities uh, that we seek to, as well as fostering the growth and awareness of the environmental issues in uh, a number of different backgrounds that we invite to our event. So while there is still much work to be done, we've taken the first steps towards creating a truly inclusive event that tackles environmental issues in the only way that generates intrinsic change. You're sharing the voices and experiences of many people. With this, we hope to realize our belief that hackathons can close the growing gap between problems and solutions to anthropogenic climate change and ultimately save the planet. Thank you.